Okay, welcome to uh, this week's uh, compiler architecture meeting. Um, today we have uh, one item on the agenda. Um, it's a proposal to add um, some new write barrier uh, IL opcodes that uh, that ye will uh, will take us through. So, um, take it away. Uh, so, uh, in debugging mode, uh, JV and GI uh, might trigger a field wash, uh, which uh, require JIT to report field write. Uh, so, we need um, some kind of uh, opcode to develop. Uh, to be able to represent both the uh, store itself and also the uh, extra activity we need to do with the store. Um, uh, we currently already uh, have uh, a write, bar uh, write barrier opcode for address type store. Um, that one is uh, for uh, Java project uh, currently it's for Java project only and uh, it already uh, does uh, the store itself and also uh, does uh, extra thing uh, with GC. So uh, I would like to extend the uh, this opcode to the other uh, type of store as well and uh, we, we will keep the Syntax of the current uh, write barrier, and uh, first, uh, the ex uh, we will need to keep all the existing children of, uh, at the uh, original load, and also might uh, be adding new uh, children for the write barrier uh, to for the information extra information needed by the extra activity. So uh, that's it. Uh, so when we were having that discussion um, about the read barrier, um, you were saying that, unless I'm unless I'm mistaken, you were saying that um, uh, we actually need to do the read barrier or the write barrier before the actual read or write operation in order for to basically intercept that. Is that the case here that we are now we have to do the write barrier before the store? Uh, for for the field uh, watch. We need to do that uh, because that's what uh, interpreter is doing. So we want to keep uh, them consistent. We need to report the field write uh, before actually uh, write to the field. Because okay. right now we do it yeah. after. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, but uh, that's probably okay. It's just a matter. Uh, it's just uh, in code. Well, I guess it. Might affect the semantics of what a write barrier is, like it's if it can live before or after the store, it can have different interpretations. So the write barrier is the store. It's the store. To how the read barrier we, is the read. You can do whatever you want. Right, but the way that it gets expanded, though, it, do you not do the store first and then you do the check to see? But that's up to the depends on what, how you're to, evaluating it. You you evaluate the whole thing. You can you can do the store and the, you can do whatever you want before the store. You can do the store and then you can do whatever you want after the store. <clears throat> and majority of cases we do the store and then we generate some code to to call the GC. And I think in some GC policies, real time we do something. We call the GC before and then we do the store. So it's flexible enough to to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I think that the, uh, and this is Andrew, I, I think that the notion of <clears throat> the right barrier is that it's a store that, that has some kind of side effect, and that side effect could be notifying the GC or as the case of what he's looking at adding, it, it's a side effect of having to notify somebody that that store has happened, right, and similar similar to what a GC does. And because the store is intrinsic with the notification, it's a single node, then um, yeah, the, whether you have to do it before or after is really just down to the semantics of the evaluator of the, the right barrier for the particular language implementation and or feature that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. okay. so 
semantics are then that you cannot tell what the order is. If they happen effectively simultaneously. Whatever the side effect is in the store are happening at the same time. That you can't tell if they happen or they could happen one before the other, but you can't tell from the IL perspective. Yeah, they're they're not separable and reorderable from an IL perspective. They are a single unit, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Any other concerns, comments? Yeah. Okay. So we need the same optimizer changes like we did for the read barrier um, for everywhere store is used. Uh, even uh, less than read barrier, but something similar. Because for read barrier, we need to uh, change it to anchor under a treetop. And uh, for right barrier, it's already under the tree hub. So uh, uh, I need to look into PRE. I think uh, it requires some changes in PRE. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah. So there's no place to check for an I score where an I read bar could be there. So we have to change those queries to check for the store property. Yeah, the uh, uh, that's uh, the, the second path. So the, for the first path, uh, we will probably apply on the all the existing. Um, we we don't have to apply all the existing optimization to the uh, new read bar. So uh, if uh, I is checking for. Um, uh, I uh, it is checking for a load of code and miss the uh, read bar. Uh, it's uh, okay. We first want to want it to be able to not crashing. So uh, in future work, I uh, will uh, I will need to teach more uh, teach optimizer more about the new opcode to make it able to rec uh, apply. Uh, the existing optimization to the, to the new outcome. Yeah, I, th I think the key point there is that um, the the cases where a write barrier explicitly has to be handled, there's already a set of them that have been identified because there is already a write barrier for reference types. And if we fail to perform a performance transformation because we wanted a store and now we have um, a, ba a barrier, um, then you're only going to lose performance by not doing that transformation and we can go through and fix those as they're found rather than needing to do a major pass trying to find them all up front. Right? The, the more worrying ones are if there's any areas that uh, would not handle the um, new opcode from a correctness point of view but I think most of those are already using the node properties and things like that. So things like, uh, um, you know, use deaths and things like that. So those I think should already be okay because they can already handle write barrier or um, store for reference types. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, I have a uh, I have a thought about the number of children for the uh, write barrier and read barrier. Should we uh, keep them flexible as undefined children in OMR level? Because a different project might require different children to re to do the side effect activity. We 
no landmark. That was a dangerous precedent. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I currently, make, yeah, I'm currently not really flexible to, you know. Yeah, currently we don't have those uh, complex, complicated side effects, but in the future, because uh, currently uh, right, uh, the original right barrier, second child is uh, the object that we need to check uh, check the hip range against. And for the field report, we only need a class. So it's a little bit, it's already a little bit different about the requirement for the children. Yeah. Because if you have the object there, it's not sufficient for you or? Uh, it, it is sufficient, uh, but so you need to generate code to like you want the class, but the object is there currently, or uh, I didn't yeah. quite understand that part. Yeah, uh, so because it's a right barrier, so we have we can get the class from that. But, oh, but, but uh, ideally, you want class constant there. Yeah. Like if you had it your way and there was yeah, a PC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems better to, like if, if you keep the object, you have to generate code at runtime to get the class of the object. It seems like a better idea to, to have the class constant there, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So if I can separate those two side effects, one of them it only needs a class. If you keep it the way it is now, you have to generate worse code. Extra, yeah, but if you had it your way, you could stick a constant in there and Yeah. Currently it's not a big issue. Actually, then we have unsymmetric file. Whereas a write and a read are different. Yeah. Up until that example, I didn't realize why you would want different children, but that, that's a good argument. That you can't satisfy those two cases with an object. You're going to generate worse code for the other case. Yeah. But would the you other case the, is not even good enough. Do you know the type of the object? Uh, yeah, where are you going to put that? Uh, on? You know the type, you can extract the class. Do you know we that? could have an uh, unresolved case that we don't. I mean, in the case where you're doing a field write and you know the class, would a write barrier with an object as a child, would you be able to find the class at the uh, time? But no, uh, for instance field, yes. But for static field, um, these the second object is uh, uh, is a Java long class. No, it's, uh, it's not even a J9 class. Or current right barrier. Yeah. Piece. Yeah. Java line. So, um, so then, how would you do the field right? Would you do? Does that apply to the field right? Uh, you mean a static field right? Yeah. Uh, you mean for real? So my, 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 my question is, the way it is now, mm -hmm. can you at compile time figure out the, whatever you need to figure for out? For resolved case, yes. Well, for if it's a question of saving one instruction for an unresolved case, mm -hmm. I don't think that should be an issue. <laughs> you can find the constant from current shape mm -hmm. and you know, generate the, the optimal sequence. Then. I guess that's good enough. Yeah. So for uh, when adding the uh, opcode property, we still want to keep the 
uh, number of children as, as a fixed number. I would say fixed number and fixed type, right? Yes. Yeah. Assuming you can extract from the object the class at compile time in most cases that the code will be executing. Forget about unresolved, but at that point you're, you're doing bad stuff anyway. Unresolved, you wouldn't be able to, how would the field? But, but hopefully you won't be ever executing unresolved code. So if you have to generate uh, an extra that, instruction. Is it possible? Does that happen? You're writing to um, an unresolved field and you have to report it? Or, or, or. That could happen. What if would we, you do in that case? You'd have to generate code that does. Uh, currently, uh, it generates a separate tree to load the JNI class. And that will be an unresolved symbol. And we will resolve that. But you need the object to do that. Uh, for for static field. Okay, for static field. Uh, no. Okay. For instance field, I can read the class that's wrong. For unresolved case, I can read the class from the object. How do you know which field you're writing or reading for something that's an unresolved class? Do you... uh, like I case, don't I mean. need to worry about which field. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the reporting only uh, requires a uh, uh, bytecode index and method. Oh, so they don't uh, require. <clears throat> they will figure out in the helper. So it's going to look at the bike codes to find the cost of code entry and get it from there. So it, it was the proposal that you were making about having the variable number of children. Was that a, do you need that? Uh, no, I'm just uh, saying uh, it seems for a uh, Java project we solve it by reusing the ch child of the second child. Okay. But I'm just thinking for other projects. Yeah, I think the precedent that at least we've been trying to set going forward here is that you know, keep the um, consistency across projects, fixed number of children, and types, and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. would be in favor of that. I think other things, things that are fixed easier is to validate that the IL is properly formed. Yeah. If you, once you get into a world where this thing can have any number of children, <laughs> what do you verify? <laughs> yeah. It's harder to. Uh, second of that. Also, from the languages that we have looked at, um, in terms of adding support for OMR, off the top of my head, none of them, I believe, would have these kinds of issues, the kinds of issues Java has where they might warrant having more than just the two children. So I tend to agree with two, just two children of specified type until proof that the contrary is necessary. We can always revisit if a use case comes along. Yeah. There's no sense in trying to anticipate every problem. Over engineering. Okay. Any more? We're kind of already in an open G9 slash OMR world if we're talking about G9 classes. <laughs> yep. So on, right? Any more discussion on that uh, topic? No? No, I'm inclined to agree with trying to keep the IL structure consistent. I mean, if we can get away without needing random extra children, so much the better, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. 
Um, okay, um, so if there's no other discussion on, on that, um, it's not on the agenda. It's kind of a late uh, last minute thing I just want to I just want to bring in here. Um, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, shrink wrapping. Uh, it did come up um, as a, um, we, we had talked about this about a year ago as to whether or not we actually want to remove it from the code base. Um, there's an issue created, I unfortunately don't remember the number off the top of my head. It's very easy to 2107. find. 2107. 2107. Um, and, uh, well, <laughs> remember that off the top of his head, okay. Um, but uh, um, anyways, uh, I'd like to rekindle that and actually bring that to some kind of a conclusion, either whether we keep the code with justification or, or we get rid of it. Um, uh, I don't necessarily want to come to a, 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 any kind of uh, consensus here, but I, I think we do need to sort of close on that in the issue. So if you do have comments uh, or thoughts on that, please uh, please add those to the um, uh, to that issue. I'm hoping we can get get something closed off uh, uh, and make a decision by next week sometime. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Um, if there's no other, uh, there's no other, uh, I'll, uh, close the call. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.